अनंतम विभुम निर्विकल्पम निरीहम शिवम संगहीनम यदोंकारगम्यम निराकारम अत्युज्वलम मृत्युहीनम परम ब्रह्म नित्यम तदेवाहमस्मि स्वाराज्य साम्राज्य विभूतिरेशा भवत कृपा श्री महिम प्रसादात प्राप्ता मया श्री गुरवे महात्मने नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमो नमस्ते स्तु पुनर्नमोस्तु नमस्त सदक कस्म चिन्मसे नम यदे तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते यदे तद्विश्वेण राजते गुरुराजते हरि ओम तत्सबजेक्ट सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन डिटेल यज्ञ दान तप कर्म वॉट इज यज्ञ वॉट इज दान वॉट इज तप एंड हाउ दे आर एसेंशियल फॉर अवर फॉर द प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ द माइंड सो जनरली वी कंसिडर एनी सेक्युलर एक्शन टू बी अंड्रेंस टू अवर स्पिरिचुअल पाथ बिकॉज ऑल रिपोर्ट दैट आई एम नॉट गेटिंग टाइम स्वामी जी ऑफिस जाना है घर में ये है वो है बहुत कुछ दैट मीन्स द थ्रू आउट द डे वी आर बिकॉज वी आर इन्वॉल्व इन सेक्युलर एक्टिविटी वी फील दैट द वी आर नॉट एबल टू डू साधना because we are not able to spend maybe one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening or whatever but it is not a right understanding the sadhana should be every moment so our interactive life has to be converted into a wholesome sadhana and that is the way they have shown that convert all your activities as yajna dana and ta- dana you it may be a specific activity when yajna and tapah can be all time activity tapas means austerity some restraint on us <coughs> something which our lower tendencies want to do not to allow that and always keep ourselves in an elevated position and yajna is always doing everything as an offering to the yajna of the universal lord that whole nature is moving without any desire like that we also go on doing whatever is to be done and whatever we are capable of doing depending on the quality of our being we do the job now that in practice this becomes possible when we remove the renounce the sangha and phala but phala does not mean the objective result it means with the objective result we connect two things kartritva and bhoktritva with the objective result we connect what ego that i have done this i have do this what will happen to me i will be happy i will be sorry i will fail etc and phala also is coming together with that that whatever the result by that will i gain enough or will i not be able to gain will i lose that is the phala part of it if these two are renounced then our focus will be entirely on the work and its result that has to be there otherwise nothing can be performed properly so this is what we were st- studying in the fifth verse we did yajnadana tapah karma 
नत्याज्यम कार्यम एवतत् नत्याज्यम कार्यम एवतत् यज्ञो दानम तपश्चैव यज्ञो दानम तपश्चैव पावना निमनीषिना पावना निमनीषिना एतान्यपितुकर्मा एतान्यपितुकर्मा संगम त्यक्वा फला संगम त्यक्वा फला कर्तव्या मे पार्थ कर्तव्या मे पार्थ निश्चित मतमुत्तम निश्चित मतमुत्तम सो हाउ एम्फेटिकली ही से इन द फोर्थ वर्ड स्टार्टिंग ही सेड निश्चय शुणु मे तत्र दिस इज मै कन्फर्म व्यू हियर अगेन ही से निश्चित मतमुत्तम दिस इज मै बेस्ट एंड कन्फर्म व्यू वॉट इज दैट दैट यज्ञ दान एंड तपस् शुड बी पर्फॉर्म फॉर द प्यूरिफिकेशन एक्सपेंशन एंड discipline disciplining the mind make it harmonious and it has to be done etani api tu karmani these karmas also yajna dana tapas also etani api tu karmani sangam tyaktva phalani cha sangam cha phalani tyaktva kartavyan kartavyani these works also has to be have to be done renouncing the sangha and phala so this is sort of a conclusion of whatever he has said in the earlier one <coughs> next verse नियतस्य तु सन्यास नियतस्य तु सन्यास नियतस्य तु सन्यास नियतस्य तु सन्यास कर्मणो नोपद्य कर्मणो नोपद्य मोहात परग मोहा परग तामस परिकीर्ति तामस परिकीर्ति सो सेवेन एट एंड नाइन He is again saying which tyaga is satvika tyaga, which tyaga is rajasika tyaga, and which tyaga is tamasika tyaga. This he said in the fourth verse. The tyago he purusha vyagra trividha sampaki prakirti ta. Tyaga also is called of three kinds: sat satvika, rajasika, and tamasika. Now here each shloka he is defining. First is the what is called tamasika tyaga. <coughs> now in the books you will find in the translation niyata they have written as nitya karma nitya karma means there are five kinds of yaga yajna and various other things to be done most of it which we do not do now so because shankaracharya's interpretation is like that everybody has followed that but niyata doesn't mean nitya at all niyata means regulated well regulated now those days the way shankaracharya has interpreted it has meaning because even nitya karma was according to the vedic prescription whatever the veda said it should be done like that so agnihotra etc was also part of it so there the nitya karma was also niyata means it is regulated by the shastras injunctions shastric injunctions but now these karmas we are not doing and niyata means regulated well regulated not only that bhagavad gita itself says uh, 6.18 no? yada viniyatam chittam atmanye vavatishthate is it not 6.18 let us find Sixth chapter, eighteenth verse. Yada viniyatam chittam atmanye bhavatishthate nispriha sarva kame bhyo yukta ityuchyate tada. You repeat, huh? Yada viniyatam chittam. 
चित्तम यदा विनियतम चित्तम आत्मन्ये वाबतिष्ठते आत्मन्ये वाबतिष्ठते निस्प्रिहस सर्वकामे भ्यो निस्प्रिहस सर्वकामे भ्यो युक्त इत्युच्यते तदा युक्त इत्युच्यते तदा सो दिस विल क्लेरिफाई यू बोथ द वर्ड नियता एस वेल एस द युक्ता युक्ता यस्टर यस्टर ना इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैड डिफाइन इन क्वाइट डिटेल बट दिस वर्ड्स इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द युक्ता युक्ता इत्युच्यते इति उच्यते तदा व्हेन द माइंड इज लाइक दिस देन द पर्सन इज कॉल्ड युक्ता yesterday yesterday last day we had explained that yukta means when it means connected it means unified when the small ego is unified with the real identity truth but or we can say when the our buddhi our intelligence is anchored in the truth so that we don't forget our real universal identity and from there everything is done so when the buddhi is anchored in truth we call that buddhi as the viveka buddhi it can start in a small manner by always looking into the real path and the auspicious path and deciding about it that also we say viveka but the real viveka is the when it enhances to that extent that the buddhi will always take the decision from the soul our real identity our universal true identity that means it will in a simpler term it will not be guided by the selfish desires personal desires it will not be guided by raga and dvesha that preference and prejudice when the intelligence is not guided by preference prejudice raga and dvesha not guided by selfishness desires then automatically where from it will take the decision it will take an impersonal decision being anchored in the truth in our real identity so normally what buddhi we have is vishaya buddhi that means we are always looking for what will be more gainful what will not be gainful etc in the objective world it is discriminating various things but the same buddhi when it gets anchored in the truth it derives its input from the real identity from the truth so the decisions become not depending on our likes and dislikes our bhoga and kartritva and bhoktritva you can say our ego and our enjoying tendencies bhoktritva means our bhogecha our desire to enjoy the world and kartritva means that i am doing i have done this done that etc <coughs> so here it is clearly mentioned that yada viniyatam i niyata i said because here it is clearly written viniyatam niyatam viniyatam viniyatam means vishesha rupena niyatam that means very well niyata that means very well regulated yada viniyatam chittam atmani eva avatishthate that is when we can fully discipline our mind then it remains fixed in the atma atmani eva atmani sapti saptami vibhakti atmani eva avatishtati it remains seated in the self now normally the mind will not be as all of us experience that the mind always goes to the objective situation likes dislikes etc but that same mind by tutoring by constantly tutored and disciplined by the viveka buddhi when it gets fixed on the atma that immediately means nispriha sarva kame bhya when it gets fixed to the atma automatically he will not have he will not be interested in the kamas why because the soul is the source of all joy everything so once you get that joy of getting anchored in the impersonal soul you will understand that the no world enjoyment is going to make you really joyous you will not look for any enjoyment from the world in sadhana chatushta it is called uparati rati means enjoyment indulgence rati means taking the rasa from the world uparati means withdrawal from rati now this withdrawal from enjoying the world will take place simultaneously with atmarati 
when we start enjoying the our anchorage in the self so uparati actually we don't have to forcefully stop our enjoying the world enjoyment will remain in a very sublime nature you will not look for it but you will enjoy because you are loving everybody you would like to think well of everybody do good for everybody so that kind of a mild enjoyment will be there and not mild but that is the harmless enjoyment with there is no selfishness anything so it will be replaced by atma rati because atma also it is not that you are going into the meditation and having the atma rati when you understand the universality of the truth then whatever you do you do out of that universality so atma is everywhere so you won't miss it anymore so automatically he becomes nispriha sarva kamebhya whatever desires are there he will not be haunted by any of the desires yukta ityuchyate tada this is the definition of the yukta then he is called yukta then what does it mean when we are anchored in the atma it is yukta now this anchorage can happen two way one when we are meditating it can be a wholesome anchorage that your mind is not functioning buddhi is not functioning you have got merged dissolved in the atma that is one thing but when you are active your mind cannot get dissolved there then you will not be able to act so then it is through the buddhi this i am telling again and again and again because lot of misconception is there about it at that time it is not if you always remain in samadhi you cannot work and when you come back also you will be again in the same soup unless unless you have anchored your buddhi in the reality in the truth that is you are having the viveka buddhi fully one so during the interactive period it is acting according to the viveka buddhi so naturally you are not governed by the motivation of desire anything you are doing not motivated by desire by but by the viveka buddhi by the niyata such an action is called niyata karma to def- say that i came back to sixth chapter viniyatam chittam it doesn't mean nitya karma here it is niyata karma means well regulated karma that means whatever our viveka buddhi is saying we should be able to do normally what will happen the viveka buddhi is saying don't do it but our senses are attracted our mind following the senses are also deluded so we run after that although the viveka is saying no it is wrong you do not do we end up doing it because of the greed or Uh, bhogacha whatever is there of the mind of the senses so there will be always an internal clash going on the mind is not listening to the viveka buddhi the senses are not listening to the proper guidance so when it becomes viniyatam means the whole being all the parts of the being are harmonized they are all linked to the reality of our identity the true identity to the truth then what happens the buddhi is completely identified with the truth it is anchored in the truth mind following the buddhi will be doing whatever the buddhi says viveka buddhi says and mind when it follows the viveka senses will automatically be following according to that because it is it can do only with the support of the mind so the whole being will be harmonious normally we are having an internal clash going on in our personality we are having the stress because of that always we are it is in english we call clash in sanskrit it is called klesha same always that klesha is going on the rubbing is going on the friction is going on the conflict is going on only when the viveka buddhi is completely anchored in the truth and the mind is following the viveka and the senses automatically follow that then we will find the whole being is becoming harmonious that internal clash is no more there so you will feel a prasada it is not an ecstatic bliss or anything but always there will be a placidity of the mind the mind will be placid placid means a very calm poised state of the mind it is called prasada we are always happy with to what prasada that what do you call it uh, 
Shakar Parar. The real prasada is this. See, when you go to a saint, the prasada is this what we get from. Because even if you sit before a saint without speaking anything, you will find the an antashitalata, an inner coolness is dawning, dawning in you. That is why if you go with a lot of questions, when you have sat for a few minutes, you will find that no questions are coming up. That means the problems are rising from your mind only. Solution lies there only. If the mind is specified, the questions are gone. Again, it will come back when you go. <laughs> Not that it will go forever. It will go when your buddhi is anchored in the soul. Then the questions will not be there. The whole being will be harmonized. And there will be a coolness within, which is called antashitalata. It is called prasada because it is not an ecstatic bliss or anything. But there will be a calm placidity which comes from lack of conflicts within, lack of clash within. So this shloka you should remember and note down as this is the definition of yuktata because yukta word has been used thoroughly everywhere in Bhagavad Gita so many times, in Upanishads also, in Kathopanishad also. When the whole being gets harmonized, Kathopanishad taking that chariot example I have shown the I will show one day uh, the projector. We have shown that the whole, the chariot, it becomes, it leads us to the ultimate auspicious goal. That is the yukta state. Similarly, repeatedly it comes. So to remember what is this yukta, because yukta we use in the sense of moderation also. Just before this, 17, 16 verse, it is there. Yukta hara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta Yukta Swapnava Bodhasya Yoga Bhavati Dukkha. This Yukta 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 we can explain it as a moderation. Moderation in food, moderation in habits, etc. But truly speaking, it is not moderation. Moderation is coming from the Viveka Buddhi actually. It this also means you, you are in doing anything, in doing tapas, in eating food, in undertaking any activity, be guided by the Viveka Buddhi. So, let us get back to it in chapter. Etanya pitu karmani Etanya pitu karmani Sangam tyaktva phalani cha Sangam tyaktva phalani cha Kattavyani ti me partha Kattavyani ti me partha Nishchitam matam uttamam Nishchitam matam uttamam This, this Sangam tyaktva tyaktva phalani cha if it is practiced, 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 then what will happen? Initially, it is Viveka Buddhi. That is, Viveka will guide our all. It will be a harmonious action. But finally, this renunciation of the Kartri Bhoktri Bhava. This is the shortest ex expression. Kartri Bhoktri Bhava. Kartri Bhava means Kartritva. That means doership. That means ego. What we'll refer to as ego, ego, that I am doing, I have done this, I have done that, I have to do this, I will do this, I will do that. That means you do whatever you are doing, that I is more important than the doing. When we say I have done this, what you have done is not so important. It might be something good, but that I have done this, that, that part is causing the problem. That is the Sangha part of it. Similarly, about future, the Phala part is that I will enjoy this. I will be doing this. So both that I becoming the focus is the creating the Sangha and the Phala. 
దట్ ఫల ఫల ఫలభోగేచ్చ ఫలాభిసంధి ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ దెర్ ఈజ్ అ శ్లోక ఇన్ యోగ వశిష్ట ఐ థింక్ అతీత అననుసంధానం భవిష్యత్ అవిచారణం ఔదాసీన్యమపి ప్రాప్తం జీవన్ముక్తస్య లక్షణం అతీత మీన్స్ పాస్ట్ నా అనుసంధానం మీన్స్ అననుసంధానం అతీత అననుసంధానం దట్ మీన్స్ డు నాట్ రన్ ఆఫ్టర్ ద పాస్ట్ యూ మే థింక్ ఆఫ్ ద పాస్ట్ టు ఫైండ్ అవర్ మిస్టేక్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ డన్ ఆర్ టు హ్యావ్ అ గైడెన్స్ ఫర్ ద ఫ్యూచర్ ఆర్ ఎనీథింగ్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ అట్ ఆల్ but the moment suppose you have found out some mistake and you are becoming depressed these are the practical tips now it is all the people who attend lecture they want some tablets tips swami ji keys chahiye if you call it the key to happiness they are very happy the key mila ki nahi mila usme kuch nahi hai finally they will go without key or losing the key also but the title has to be three keys to happiness or three keys to excellence so what is this the tip is ha huh, you can take the help of the past experience to decide that this has gone wrong i have to do this but seeing that you have done wrong when you become depressed that depression is caused by the ego and phalo bhoge chha both are you able to understand you should see as when you are seeing that this flower has dried it has become black are you getting depressed no but when you are finding something wrong with my action or my insight we are getting depressed similarly suppose one day you discover that i am very jealous if you become depressed then your jealousy will not go you have to see it with the objective vision that yes there is some jealousy as you see in jealousy in others you have to see jealousy in you also when will it happen when you have the impersonality do you get it so the moment we become similarly you can apply it to elation also suppose you have done something very good the moment you become elated about it ha huh, it's a praise what the work i have done it it's gone it is then the sangha then again it is the sangha and phalo bhoge acha so atita ananusandhanam doesn't mean that you don't look at the atita at all for your experiential experience your guidance whatever you can do anything like a research student as if you are looking into the objective world look into your own life also then you will get the correct vision also what otherwise what will happen when you see something wrong you will try to cover up not to others to yourself also you will not be able to be open to yourself also you will try to you find your mind you will try to cover up saying excuses and putting forward this excuse that excuse etc similarly when it is something good you will try to aggrandize it that good might be your friend is doing much more you have never appreciated but when you have done you are <laughs> you let it about it so this is what is coming so when they say atita ananusandhanam means don't run after this past means relate it to your ego and phala bhogechha you should not do similarly bhavishyad avicharanam don't go on imagining the future loitering in the future world of i will do this i will do that then this will happen i will get lot of money i will become multimillionaire then my wife will be happy all those things these are all sangha and phalabhi sandhi phala bhoge acha you can think of the future when you are putting up a factory you have to think very well of the future that what is the product going to be how much we are going to invest when the product comes out will it have the market proper at what point we will sell how many people we will employ is it not about future so all those thoughts should be there but not connected to your phala bhoge acha that and then i will become happy or i will gain this i will gain that i will become a millionaire samajh rahe hai na so atita ananusandhanam atita ananusan atita ananusan atita ananusandhanam bhavishyad vicharanam audasinam api praptam 
what is this audasinyam we generally use audasinya as a person who doesn't take interest in anything it is not so udasinata has come from ut asina asina means seated ut means high that means one who is seated at a high level elevated level ek lamba stool laga diya upar baith jaiye elevated level hoga kya ye andar mein hai that elevated level is in the viveka buddhi it is same viveka buddhi the buddhi has to be connected to the soul that is the audasinya because audasinya means he will not have this selfish personal associate various uh, desires and all that is why we call from there the abbreviation has come when somebody is a little dispassionate also we say udasina udasin hoke baithe hai matlab he doesn't have interest in food and other things actually he doesn't have he is not guided by the personal selfish interest because of his high seatedness because of his intelligence getting anchored in the soul in the viveka buddhi so audasinyam api praptam jeevan muktasya lakshanam these are the characteristic marks of a jeevan mukta who is liberated while alive while living ha it is viveka chodavani shloka number yeah so niyatasya tu sanyasah karmanah nopapadyate na upapadyate is not proper what is not proper niyatasya karmanah niyatasya shashti ekavachanam karmanah also shashti ekavachanam so niyatasya niyata is the karma's vishesha adjective niyatasya karma karmanah tu sanyasah na upapadyate that one should not renounce or leave the niyata karma niyata karma means well regulated karma viveka guided karma that means all the actions should not be desire motivated action now all our actions are desire motivated so they should be left actually the karmas should not be left but the desire should be left this is the correction if even if it is a desire motivated karma suppose you open a fact you are going to do a project or so at a factory the you are initially guided by said desire you have desired that by that i will become very rich or this will happen that will happen you are starting with the desire now bhagavad gita is not saying that because it is desire motivated you leave the activity do you get my point these are have to be understood very well people are misunderstanding everything if you leave the activity then you lose the opportunity to purify your mind to progress in the sadhana what he is saying is that well it is you have thought about it as a desire motivated activity motivated by desire but now do the activity leaving the desire you understand it very well that it is an action which will have some objective result which will be good for the people or good for this or that it is a service to the people or whatever you want and it has to be done but i should not pin my happiness or unhappiness my loss gain etc in inner gain in a loss etc to the result so it no longer remains desire motivated it is motivated by your viveka this has to be done is it to be done or not you analyze again if it is something which should not be done you leave the activity also if it is to be done according to the viveka do it moha tasya parityagaha tamasa parikirti tah out of delusion if you leave that work the niyata the well regulated viveka guided work the work actions which are guided by viveka if you leave them out of delusion that day also we took some example but there will be so many examples about it that the other day what i was taking some story no suppose one is coming to my mind that 
one devotee was there who one day came to swami ji and said that swami ji i have surrendered all my tan man dhan that means my body mind and whatever i have at your feet so i will stay here and do rest of my life i will stay in the ashram and do the tapas so swami ji knew that the person is not at all harmonious with anybody so he said that see if you leave whatever sadhana you have been doing he is an initiated disciple of swami ji i think as far as i know whatever sadhana you have been doing at home you have not been able to harmonize with your even children also son or wife or so in the profession also you have not been able to be comfortable with anybody so there also there is lot of trouble do you think that coming to an ashram you will be happy where people have come from in home at least they are your children your wife in an ashram 10 people have come from 10 different states different lang- linguistic background cultural background economic background educational background it's a mixture of all strange variety so it is extremely difficult to live harmoniously in an ashram a person of your nature who has not been able to even work in the office or stay in the family with harmony will not be able to do it at all so it's a wrong step why don't you do the sadhana there itself when you find that nothing is affecting you then you can think of coming to the ashram also or if you want if you want to leave the family life and all i can give you an advice that you have a property in such and such place why don't you have a small kutia there and do your tapas sitting there alone no 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 swami ji i have offered everything at your feet i will stay here and do my tapas here so he is thinking that leaving the all the activities he will be very comfortable in the ashram this is a delusion the he has not been able to be harmonious at home is because of what is it because of the external situation or his own internal situation he is not able to even when the guru is explaining however much he explained he was not able to understand this is the delusion people suffer from they think that the work that is the situation external situation is causing all the problem my family is not all right my school was not all right my office was not all right and that is why i am disturbed if i stay in the ashram here everything is full and fragrant everything will be all right this is the tamasika tyaga out of delusion there will be so many other examples it's not coming to my mind see why they are writing about it because after the upanishadi kira where this karma tyaga was not at all so prevalent there was a time when the spirituality got a little lopsided it got a little deviated from the reality so people started thinking that leaving home leaving all the work and taking up sanyasa in the cave or in the forest is all what spirituality means and bhagavad gita means karma tyaga that means you have to leave whatever you are doing you cannot do it is that is called the naish karma actually neither naish karma is that not sanyasa is that sanyasa means the renunciation of the ego and naish karma means renunciation of the doership possessorship that you are neither possessing anything you are neither not doing anything so it is an internal attainment but that internal attainment concept was somehow not so prevalent so people started leaving that is why bhagavad gita krishna is repeatedly saying you can find in arjuna that is also what is that that is coming in the rajasika tyaga what was arjuna saying that i have to fight with my grandfather grandmother and it is going to be a great sinful activity so better i will take up sanyasa and beg 
and stay in the forest. That was his statement. So he was also trying to renounce his work. He was a fighter. His war was his work. He was trying to renounce that, thinking that by renouncing and taking to a Paribrajan life of a sannyasin, he will attain the highest. That is not exactly tamasika delusion. Delusion is there, but that is a sort of a rajasika tyaga as it is coming in the next verse. What is it? Dukkha mitye vayat karma Dukkha mitye vayat karma Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Sakritva rajasam tyagam Sakritva rajasam tyagam Naivatyaga phalam labhet Naivatyaga phalam labhet Dukkha mitye vayat karma Dukkha mitye vayat karma Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Sakritva rajasam tyagam Sakritva rajasam tyagam Naivatyaga phalam labhet Naivatyaga phalam labhet He says dukkham iti eva yat karma Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Kaya klesha bhayatya jet Kaya means body Klesha means trouble So dukkham iti and kaya klesha bhaya that means two things are there. One is that it will cause sorrow to the mind, unhappiness to the mind, trouble to the mind, and it will cause trouble to the body. So both these thoughts, out of these thoughts, one who renounces some work. So he says, Dukkha mitteva yat karma kaya klesha bhayatya jit. The Your Viveka Buddhi is saying that it has to be done. In Mahabharata also, Krishna is repeatedly saying that tasmad yudhyasva bharata, tasmad yudhyasva, tasmad yudhyasva. Therefore, Arjuna, you fight, you fight. That means, if he considers Krishna as the guru, his own Viveka Buddhi may not be that clear or sharp by then. But the guru is saying, he has to listen to the guru. What a disciple does, until his viveka becomes absolutely clear, he has to listen to the guru and follow whatever the guru says. That is why we say the unquestioning devotion to the guru. Unquestioning devotion. When the guru says, simply we have to do it. Why? Because my viveka buddhi is not fully clear. The clarity has not done. If you start analyzing guru's statement that he is saying like this, whether I should do or whether... I should not do. That means who is Guru? You are the Guru. You are analyzing Guru's statement whether he has said, asked me to do the correct thing or not. Then better you do a, go ahead with your own Viveka. So as long as that confidence is not there, the clarity is not there, we have to fully listen to the Guru. It is not mortgaging our intelligence. This is, it is a very purest intelligence by which we follow the Guru. People think that, can you mortgage your intelligence to that that extent? Well, you don't mortgage, but spirituality is not for you. Your intelligence has to go to that far to understand that I am considering Guru to be at a higher level. And not only that, he knows better than, he knows about me better than I know about myself. Otherwise, how will he guide you? If he doesn't know what is your goal, which I myself do not know, then will the Guru be able to guide? So the Guru-Shishya relationship, the first thing is to understand that Guru knows about me better than I know about myself. Otherwise, it will not be possible. We always say that you are thirsty, moving in the desert. You look for water, nobody is there. Some people are coming from the other side. Whom will you ask whether it, there is water or not? There are many people coming, whom will you ask? If you see a person very thirsty and haggard, will you ask him? If you see a person who is very cool and satisfied, you will go and ask him, because he might have got water. The other person, even if he says that I have got water, it cannot be trusted, because he is looking thirsty and haggard. So the guru, you have to select like that, that who 
whom you are going to accept as the guru by looking and your analysis you have to select that yes i can ask him now once you have asked him he told you that yes yes just now i had some very good water i was very thirsty i got my water i can cannot go back again but i can guide you he tells you that you walk straight on this path only for 10 minutes then when you see a heap of sand there you take a right turn there walk for 5 minutes then you look at the left you find a palm tree head is being seen the leaves are seen then you straight walk towards the palm tree and when you are under the palm tree look down there is water but the water cannot be seen from where you are standing even when you have not gone to the palm tree at a distance took took the right turn left turn you will not know the water when you go and finally stand near the palm tree you feel, find the water and drink it now suppose you walked for 10 minutes and you find that the things are becoming more arid it is not at all becoming more lively or so that man must have told me wrongly it's not a right turn i should take the left turn where it seems to be a little more greener perhaps you take a left turn and go your own way and get lost in the desert this is what happens generally you have to follow why did i say all these things that arjuna has to follow what krishna said दुखमित्येव यत्कर्म काय क्लेश भया त्यजे स कृत्वा राजसम त्यागम नैव त्याग फलम लवे वेन ही इज लिविंग द वर्क आउट ऑफ फियर फॉर सम मानसिक डिफिकल्टी सम मेंटल ट्रबल ऐ मेंटल ट्रबल ना फॉर वट डू कॉल इट फिजिकल ट्रबल एंड दुख दुख मीन्स मेंटल अनहैपीनेस some unhappiness or difficulty mental difficulty or physical difficulty out of fear for that when you are leaving the work then it is called rajasika tyaga in arjuna's case what is what it is his mental difficulty was facing bhishma and drona that was the major he was not afraid about the kaya klesha the physical part perhaps he was not worried about but he was worried about the mental dukkha and wanted to leave the work and go that would have been a rajasika tyaga so krishna was repeatedly saying not to do it in many places people don't marry not because they want to practice celibacy or so they are afraid of taking the burden of the family even if they marry they don't don't go for the children because they are afraid of taking the burden of the family in our shastras it is not approved he says that if you remain unmarried by 40 years of age you have to take up naishtika sanyasa or sanyasa you get my point beyond 40 if you remain unmarried then you should take to a spiritual life of renunciation which will be for a greater purpose than a family life family life is meant for vamsha vriddhi that means sustaining the so civilization that's extremely important not only that when we are procreating we are giving birth to children our shastras say that you are doing something which is parallel to brahma the creator it is something parallel to brahma's creation because you don't know how long your progeny is going to inhabit this world your son his son or daughter then their progeny their progeny how long the vamsha the lineage will go you don't know so you are responsible for giving birth to the future generations so it is so much of a responsibility it is a responsibility like the responsibility of brahma the creator you have to be so that is why in our uh, shastras who is mobile is ringing we have dharma artha kama moksha dharma artha kama moksha dharma means knowing the righteous way of life or the 
which sustains the universe. Dharma means which sustains the law of sustenance of nature, which when we follow it sustains life. So first we have to la learn the law of sustenance of nature. Then we have to learn, we have to earn our livelihood, artha. When we earn our livelihood, then comes kama. Kama means fulfilling the rightful desires. You cannot fulfill your desires causing harm to others. If you want to steal and fulfill your desire, it is not right because it is harmful to others. So you have to fulfill your rightful desires. And then when you have done it, then you are supposed not to hold on to your grandchildren and all to walk off taking up Banapastha or Sanyasa. That is Moksha. Now, if we are disapproving Kama, then would we have proved in the Purushartha? These are called fourfold Purushartha. Purushartha means Purushasya Artha. That means whatever we gain in life, by applying our paurusha, our self-will, self-effort. Whatever we gain in life by applying our self-effort. And these are the four purushattas. Suppose people feel that always we are in our shastras, we are disapproving of kama, desires. It is not so. Desires are a fact of the world. When we are talking about renouncing the desire, it is we are trying to get to that last point. Moksha level, that we have not been able to understand the truth and not been able to be happy. So we want to know where lies the ultimate fulfillment. Then only the Moksha Shastras are taught. Or it can be from the beginning, those who do not have interest in the world, they can take it from the beginning also. But there is a scope for the Purushartha, fourfold Purushartha, the third one is the Fulfillment of the karma. With the money you have received, artha you have earned, you have to fulfill your rightful desires. Now, in doing it, what the Shastras say is that, don't think that, suppose the karma means you, you want to marry, you have to marry, you have to have children. That is part of the sustenance of the civilization, is part of the dharma. If nobody marries and procreates, then the civilization will not be sustained. They say in Germany they don't have the next generation mostly. It is dying. So that is a very dire situation. If So let us not decry the karma part of it. It is essential. What only they are giving us the caution is that don't think that by marrying you will become permanently fulfilled. Or that is going to meet your ultimate goal of life. You marry because it is a necessity. You have to fulfill karma, but not only that, you have to have a proper next generation progeny. For that, you have to marry. But don't get stuck to it thinking that that is the ultimate in life. As you have done your family duties and all, then you look for the further step and go for moksha. That is also for the benefit of the civilization. Without the Brahma Vidyas, our civilization would not have sustained for thousands and thousands of years. We don't know how long. The whole civilization is existing only because of the Brahma Vidya. Because it is always bringing the society back on the auspicious track. So our religious, our religion is very, very wise. It has been created by the knowers. Although it is giving simpler models for the mass because they will not understand the truth. But everything is based on the fundamental truth. So, that leaving the normal way of life of satisfying our desire and having a proper progeny, that should not be left out of Kaya Klesha Bhayat. Then you are not getting the opportunity to purify your mind. All these are necessary to purify your mind. So you completely change the action. Don't think that I am marrying only to satisfy my karma. It's not so. It is part of the whole thing. But in the process, I will beget some good children for the society and I will see that they are brought up properly and I will do my whatever other things to be done also. And never think that I am going to be fulfilled by that. For fulfillment, I have to know the truth.
or at least walk on the path of the truth. When I wanted to leave and join Pondichi the ashram at one point in when I was doing uh, working for the doing research, I wanted to leave the work and join Pondichi the Aurobindo ashram. I was almost on the point of leaving, but then I thought that I have to ask my guru. Uh, the actual initiation guru is Baba Samaj's guru, so I went to Baba. <coughs> to ask that I have thought about it, that I will go and do it. Baba listened to everything, then asked that, why do you want to go? I gave long lectures and all, whatever, why I thought I will go and all. No, 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 no. You have to finish your PhD. Okay, before PhD itself, you can get married. You marry and then both of you leave. Both of you join <laughs> Pondicherry. So later on, I understood that that would have been a wrong step. At that, but I was at least good to listen to my guru. That I followed whatever he said. In his, not initially, I resisted quite a lot, argued, but I was not uh, closed up. Openly, I argued for three days or so. Then I said that the argument is not reaching anywhere, like Shankaracharya and Mandana Mishra, that you have your point and I have my point. Then I said that, okay, if you want me to do, you give me Adesha. Adesha means order and I will follow. That was my Guru Bhakti. I said that you give me order and I will follow. He wrote back saying that whatever I think to be your welfare, for your welfare, I have said that. If you want, you can consider it as my order. So all these are not a Viveka-oriented decision. Why should I think of going away there, leaving this, leaving that? I thought it is a golden way where all the work is spiritual and all. But had I have enough of Viveka, I would have understood everywhere any ashram is made of people only. There will be all kinds of animals. Huh? Animals? We are all animals. Some are better than others. So it's all delusion, partly delusion, partly maybe I was not interested in working for the research PhD and all. So that work was becoming a little not so likable. So I wanted to leave the work. So karma tyaga can happen out of delusion, out of some dislike and various things. So he's saying that it should not be. You should do everything guided by your Viveka. When the time comes for living, that also will be guided by the Viveka and you will live. Otherwise, it is called Rajasatyagam. Such a tyaga which is out of fear for any burden or anything, that is called Rajasatyaga. Naiva tyaga phalam labhet. In that case, you won't get the benefit of tyaga. What is the benefit of tyaga? Pavanani manishinam. It is purifying. It makes our mind impersonal. It makes our mind free of the desires. It makes our mind pure. So that phala will not be had when we are living out of fear of unhappiness or physical discomfort. Kāryamitteva yat karma Kāryamitteva yat karma Niyatam kriyate arjuna Niyatam kriyate arjuna Sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva Sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva Satyaga sattviko mataha Satyaga sattviko mataha See, this we have already discussed, but now he is calling that Tyaga as the Satvika Tyaga. In all this analysis, everywhere the Satvika practice is the one which we have to take. And in some 
where we find that we are getting bound by the sattva guna there we have to go beyond that to get rid of the bondage created by the sattva guna this i have been explaining always so he says karyam iti eva yat karma niyatam kriyate arjuna niyatam karyam niyatam karyam karyam means which has to be done and niyatam means which is well regulated again regulated means regulated by the viveka buddhi sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva satyaga satviko mataha that is called the satvika tyaga i am not going into great detail because we have already been explaining this that sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva phalam means not the objective phala but the subjective phala that is not relating it to selfish gain i will be happy or i will have some loss this that all those should not be they they all should be renounced and sangam tyaktva means leaving the ego part of it that is in short we call it kartritva bhoktritva kartritva means i have done this and bhoktritva means i will enjoy this if these two are there not there then it becomes satvika tyaga and by that what will happen we will slowly discover that i have nothing to gain from the world nothing in the world is going to be really making me happy when we do the satvika tyaga automatically we will understand that the happiness does not come from anything objective so the doing motivated by desires we will understand that it is not going to fulfill me at all the happiness lies within and when we are free of desires then we automatically become happy that is it is a great discovery when we discover that fulfillment of desires do not make us happy desires make make us unhappy desires make us unhappy and when we leave the desire when we renounce the desire then automatically we find that we are happy we don't have to become happy happiness is right there joy is there within so understanding that desires are actually making us unhappy and when the desire is fulfilled that desire goes so we are happy at that time because the unhappiness goes nothing else it is such a simple thing but it will take a long time to understand because of our bhogacha that we constantly want to enjoy the world and it doesn't go from a we are not able to eliminate that part that conviction that i will enjoy the world actually we don't enjoy the world the world enjoys us bhogana bhukta vayameva bhukta we think that we are enjoying the world if we are enjoying the world world should reduce and we should grow the world remains the world we vanish so who is enjoying home <laughs> priyaris way of seeing bhogana bhukta vayameva bhukta ha tapo na tapta vayameva tapta ha we think that we have done enough of tapas we have not done any austerity at all only the austerity has heated us oh humne itna jap kiya hai 10000 karke roz jap kiya hai itna tapas kiya hai are by that what has happened have you got the what is the goal the purpose of the japa you haven't got then it is japa has only utilized you that you have got emaciated by doing your tapas kalo na jata ha bhayam eva jata ha always we say that some time is going time is going time doesn't go anywhere we go we say time is going time doesn't go it is the change of our objective objects the our body and everything we go tapare trishnana jirna bhayameva jirna the desires have not gone jirna means desires have not gone eaten up not gone become over bhayameva jirna by hosting the desires we have become emaciated that means we have been eaten up by the desire the desire, desire still remain like that mm-hmm. 
भोगे रोग भयम कुले च्युति भयम वित्ते नृपालाद भयम माने दैन्य भयम बले रिपु भयम काये कृतांता भयम न रूपे जराया भयम देन शास्त्रे वादि भयम गुणे खल भयम काये कृतांता भयम सर्व वस्तु भयान्वित भुविना वैराग्यम भयम वॉट इज दट भोगे रोग भयम when we are attached to the bhoga when we are clinging we develop sangha to indulgence bhoga enjoyment then we have the fear of disease oh 50 saal ho gaya hai ab kya hoga rasgulla un nahi kha payenge diabetes ho gaya hai so if we get cling it is a sangha question otherwise you have bhoga there won't be any fear of disease that disease will come theek hai but when we are getting clinging when we are clinging to the bhoga then the fear of disease will hold bhoge roga bhayam kule chuti bhayam if you are very you feel proud about your lineage i am prime minister son or such great person son or so it's a very we belong to a very religious austere family अरे तुम्हारा बच्चा देखो क्या होगा खत्म हो गया पूरा स्काउंड्रल बन गया दैट मीन्स वेन यू आर टेकिंग प्राइड इन योर लीनियज डोंट यू विल हैव द फियर ऑफ योर सन बिकमिंग गोइंग एस्ट्रे दैट फियर ऑलवेज विल बी देयर इफ द सन बिकम्स लाइक दैट वी डोंट नो वॉट टू डू वी गेट एंग एंग्री एंड स्टार्ट बीटिंग द सन the question is whether we are clinging to that or not if you are not clinging to our prestige lineage and all yes you have it and if the sun becomes otherwise that also you accept it no problem everywhere the sangha and phala bhoga that by thinking of the lineage that i am that i am that and i am trying to enjoy the others giving me the prestige for that you have you enjoy good food but you think that i have to enjoy more i have to enjoy more you are clinging to that like that all these are there what is that then what happens finally vairagyam eva bhayam what is vairagya he says only the abode of fearlessness is vairagya what is vairagya vairagya means viraga that means not to cling to anything have the impersonal view you go on enjoying everything you have riches you have fame you have great lineage you have enough of materials for your comfort nothing will happen if you do it with vairagya no fear nothing you will enjoy the best with vairagya but people think that the vairagya means he will not have any enjoyment the real vairagya is impersonality unless that impersonality is there you will not be able to enjoy even your children you will the affection towards the children you will re- really enjoy when there is vairagya if you think that it is my son my son my son then the enjoyment will be less is it not so okay so कार्यमितर्जुन क्रियतेजुन संगम त्यक्वा फल संगम त्यक्वा फल सत्यागस्त्विको मत सत्यागस्त्विको मत 
नेष्ट्य कुशल कर्म नेष्ट्य कुशल कर्म कुशल नुषज्जते कुशल नुषज्जते त्यागी सत्व सामविष्टो त्यागी सत्व सामविष्टो मेधावी छिन्न संशय मेधावी छिन्न संशय this i will take up tomorrow it is now uh, his father describing the real tyaga where it leads us to that is after discussing the satvika tyaga which is one to be taken to that is it is not the actions to be renounced but the desires to be renounced and taking to everything in the well regulated manner regulated by our viveka buddhi which always connects us to the truth we should go on doing things connected remaining yukta remaining connected to the truth through viveka buddhi then the whole process will be purifying 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 till we finally understand that there is no meaning in katritva and bhoktritva there is no ego at all who is enjoying or anything we will understand that my personality is also made of the three gunas of prakriti it is playing in the prakriti like the other elements in prakriti and knowing that we will become free of all the bondages created by the three gunas so what will happen then whatever you do your will will be harmonious or in tune with the infinite with the divine will our will will become in tune with the divine will so whatever we do it will become a divine work divine action that is how the life will get divinized so it gets divinized by removing our small egoistic identity and the corresponding delusion of enjoying the world when these two go then we become unified with the divine all the activities become part of divinity this is the goal we will stop 2 minutes at that if any question is there i will answer hmm 2 minutes at that oh that chanting will take away if any question is there short question i can answer why don't you give a slip so that i can because i have been speaking speaking you are listening i am also not able to know what is going what is happening etc so when you ask some questions it becomes more vibrant today morning i was discussing in the class that actually these what is happening here in the lectures generally when uh, teacher is speaking what we are trying to do is to communicate or transfer some sattva guna in the listeners but how do we transfer the sattva guna the vehicle is the buddhi vehicle is the words but with the words explanations illustrations what are we doing we are approaching through your buddhi is it not your intelligence so through the words emotions the expressions etc our buddhi is getting connected to your buddhi so whatever sattva guna is there in our buddhi it is getting communicated to your buddhi so your buddhi is becoming sattvika so if the buddhi becomes sattvika then it is able to grasp the truth easily so if you are humble there is enough of receptivity that humility is very important otherwise this connection will not take place even if i transmit it will be thrown back so as it is communicated your buddhi is becoming sattvika and you are able to grasp the truth then but why is it that when you go out you are not able to remember or recollect the truth because the two things are different one is receptivity another is retentivity one is buddhi another is dhruti 
Buddhi has the receptivity and dhriti has the retentivity. Dhriti means dharana, that means whatever holds. So whatever we understand with our intelligence, buddhi, that has to be held, carried, retained by the dhriti. So when the buddhi becomes sattvika, it is able to grasp the truth easily. So through explanation, illustrations, anyhow we are trying to introduce some sattvika buddhi in you and you are able to grasp the truth. But when you are going out to keep the truth, to hold the truth, retain the truth, you have to change your personality, developing, inculcating sattvika dhriti, which depends on your own sadhana. We cannot do anything there. The dhriti part you have to do with your sadhana. You have to change your constitution to make it more sattvika. Then only the, you can call it satya dhriti also, to, to hold the truth. So that depends on your practice. But suppose the retentivity is not there and you are refusing to accept what is being done, then what happens? The communication is not complete. In that case, we get tired. It becomes very stressful, I mean tiring for us. After the lecture, we will feel depleted. If the audience is very good, the listeners are good and we feel that it, the communication is full, then we get energized. The communication when it is good, through the lecture we get more energized. But when the communication is hindered, we get tired, depleted by that. Still we will try, but it goes and gets reflected. Sometimes if it is like wall, then we will stop. <laughs> this is the truth of the whole jnana yajna that way. Prabuddham vimuktam vikaradihinam prasannam sadanitya bodhasvarupam param nishchalam nirgunam sarvarupam bhajeham sadanusmarami pranomi Prabuddham vimuktam vikaradihinam prasannam sadanitya bodhasvarupam param nishchalam nirgunam sarvarupam bhajeham sadanusmarami pranomi